All right, so uh, Brian, uh, you run the TAP program. What, what kinds of successes have we had with, with TAP? Well, sure. I mean, one of the primary goals of TAP, or Technical Adoption Program, is to get in real-world customers who are going to deploy our technology early. It's a product validation program. It's an engineering program. The goal is to make sure we get real-world bugs. We flesh anything out before it goes out to the masses. And uh, so we have kind of two different groups. We have 30 TAP customers who uh, do uh, production deployments. So this is their mission critical applications that are running day to day in their production deployments. In addition, we have 120 additional TAP customers who are doing evaluation in their dev and test and pre-production environments. Uh, we set our numbers up front. We wanted a few hundred deployments. We've actually uh, gone past that by over 400%. We've had hundreds upon hundreds of production deployments running anything from line of business applications, SQL workloads, exchange workloads, clustering workloads, um, really the whole gamut. The feedback's been good. We've had a lot of uh, bugs from the customers. A number of them have been accepted and resolved in the product before we've gone out the door with it. So. Cool. So, would you say it's enterprise ready? <laughs> I'd say it's definitely enterprise ready. I think uh, just by testament of the number of deployments we've had, um, you know, there were with any pre-release product, the TAP customers were conservative early on. They deployed to a minimum num uh, number of uh, production environments, and then it's just really taken off from there. It's reliable, it's secure, it's very fast, very performant, and that again has really caused them to deploy many more workloads than we anticipated in the program. And the general feedback has been, not only is it production ready, we've been running it in production for months upon months. Uh, so what are some of the cool things that customers are using their uh, virtualization for? So across all of our TAP customers, they've really deployed all of the different features and scenarios that uh, we cover in Hyper-V. Uh, as Ben mentioned earlier, snapshotting, we see a lot of use of that in the development and test environments. And there's also, there's a little confusion, but there's also VSS, or Volume Shadow Copy, which is another kind of snapshot that they're also using in their production environments. And I think we'll turn it back over to Ben, who will go a little more into depth on what VSS is, how it's different than what snapshotting is. Cool. All right, Ben, T take it away here. So, so the first thing I'll, I'll do before I start drawing stuff on the board is talk about the whole, and, and we get asked this question a lot, is snapshotting versus snapshotting. Because we have this concept that we've just talked about, which we call snapshotting. Then there's this VSS concept with it, which is snapshotting. And people kind of get confused, think, is one based on the other? When do I use one versus the other? So the first thing is, no, unfortunately, they're completely different technologies built on completely different concepts. Um, internally, we tend to talk about the, the snapshotting that I've been talking about as virtual machine snapshotting and VSS snapshotting, uh, just to make it clear which one we're talking about. And they're really designed for different uh, use cases and scenarios. So virtual machine snapshotting is really about a development and test type environment where you're sitting down, you're using the virtual machine, and as you're running along, you're dropping, you want to get, you know, this point in time, I want to keep that. You know, I might want to come back to that. Um, it's definitely user-driven. VSS snapshotting, on the other hand, is about backup. It's about, you know, I want to do a nightly backup of my virtual machines. These are production servers. I want to be able to do disaster recovery. <coughs> One of the biggest uh, differences that, that kind of affects this is what we talk about when we say uh, stateful versus stateless. So when you take a, a virtual machine snapshot, you're actually taking a, a point in time image of the virtual machine that's stateful. And what this means is like, if I'm running office and I'm doing a bunch of stuff and I take a snapshot uh, using virtual machine snapshotting, when I come back to that snapshot, uh, my, my, you know, my copy of Outlook and Word are going to be exactly where they were doing exactly what they were doing. Which is great for dev test, but it's actually terrible for a server. Because if you imagine, let's say I you know, plan to take my snapshot on 3 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, and then I want to restore that as a backup. Well, if that virtual machine was running an exchange server, and I use a virtual machine snapshot, when I go to restore that as a backup, that exchange server is going to still be running, and it's going to think that it's 3 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, and that it should have hundreds of clients connected to it. And it's going to be in a really confused and bad state when it comes back. Uh, so VSS snapshotting is a different technique altogether, which is about getting a backup style snapshot uh, involved. So the first thing before I, I dive into to drawing is to say, 
VSS, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, a, a backup technology that's built into Windows today. Um, it's part of Windows. All main server applications like SQL, Exchange, etc., cetera, uh, have support uh, for VSS. And we're really building into that infrastructure. Now, the, the, the VSS, as I said, has this, intro, uh, has this big infrastructure. And it's really, it's designed around being extensible so that every server application writes their support for VSS, which is, is what we're really able to leverage. So this actually, describing this requires kind of a, a unique diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this. This is the many arrows diagram. So this, is, this represents a timeline here. And this is a low boundary. This is the parent. And this is the child. What do you mean by boundary? It's just a divisor so you know when I've crossed from parent to child territory. Oh, okay. Now if we want to be really tricky, what we'll do is we'll draw that in red. So above the line is parent, below the line is child. Okay. So what this looks like is I come to my parent environment and I'm using a backup application, like I'm using uh, Microsoft's DPM or I'm using a, a third-party backup application that has support for VSS. And I say, you know, let's take a backup. And what's going to happen is, is that application is going to request to VSS uh, in the parent partition, let's take a VSS snapshot. And the VSS architecture then goes out and it talks to uh, each of the server applications on uh, the parent partition and says, OK, everyone, it's time to prepare for a snapshot. And when you tell a server application to prepare for a snapshot, what it, what's really happening is the server application needs to get all of its data on disk in a, in a data consistent mode. And it then needs to switch to a mode where it's you know, caching data in memory or using a separate file to, to track changes so that it can kind of stay in this data consistent mode until VSS tells it that a, a snapshot has been completed. And the whole aim here is to be able to you know, take these backups while the virtual, oh, sorry, not while the virtual machine, while the physical computer is running and have data consistency, which is a very challenging goal. So, you know, all the server roles and applications get contacted and Hyper-V is one of the ones that get contacted. And what then happens is we get this request and you know, to say, hey, prepare your virtual machines uh, for a, a VSS backup. And what we actually do is we send this message over the boundary you know, from the parent to the child. And when it arrives in the child, we have a component in here that essentially looks like a backup application. And it requests to VSS in the child OS to take a snapshot. Now, here is when things get kind of interesting and, and messy. Um, there's, this, there's this interesting design around VSS snapshotting. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's a really good architectural design at the end of the day, but it makes things really difficult for pulling this off in virtual machines. The way VSS snapshotting is built is as a, as a backup application, you request VSS, take a snapshot. And you don't hear back from the VSS infrastructure until after the snapshot's taken. And VSS basically comes back to you and says, I've taken a snapshot, here's the unique identifier so that you can access that snapshot and get the data out of that snapshot. And what this means is as a backup application, you never know like the magical point in time when the system's you know all data consistent, and the VSS team did this very you know very purposefully, because they were afraid and rightfully so that if they let people know when this magic point in time was for them, it's a critical point in time. They need to be getting in there, 